Hi, my name is uh, Joseph Hurtado. I'm going to be presenting on the genetic disorder, arginino-succinic aciduria. It's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, so history. So this is amino acid disorder. So the name actually is a derivative from an elevation of arginino-succinic acid in the blood and urine of an impacted individual. So it's also commonly known as arginino-succinate lysase deficiency, so I'll just be calling it ASL. So basically how it works is it causes ammonia in the body to begin to accumulate in the blood. So this accumulation will cause elevated levels of ammonia, which in a normal person is formed when proteins are broken down to the body. However, if ammonia levels become very high, it can be very toxic to the body and especially to the nervous system as it is sensitive to abundant amounts of ammonia. A diagnosis would be given when a patient has an elevated plasma ammonia concentration and also an elevated plasma citrulline concentration. So prevalence and effects. So it's commonly present in the neonatal period, so in newborns, and it can also be found rarely outside of the neonatal period, but it also but it can be found. So it occurs in one in seventy thousand newborns. So physical effects include hyperammonia ammoninium which can be shown by increases in lethargy, vomited, lack of appetite, heart rate, and respiratory alkalosis. If systems go untreated, symptoms go untreated, it can ultimately lead to coma and death. So physical effects in the post neonatal period, basically all the same, but cognitive impairment, behavioral issues, and learning disabilities as well. So mode of inheritance. It's it's uh, inherited. It's inherited by a condition called autosomal recessive pattern. So this pattern is successful when both copies of a specific gene in each cell contain this mutation. For example, if you have, we'll say, we'll just use the letter A. So for autosomal recessive, both both letters need to be lowercase a. So an infected individual has a 25% chance of being affected, 50% chance of being a character showing no symptoms, and a 25% chance of being unaffected and not a carrier. So here's a little uh, pedigree example. So as you can see, the parent, Frankie, he is a carrier, and Danica, the wife, is actually affected. So given that, their offspring probability can only be 50% normal and 50% carriers. And then as you can see, it branches out. So the location of the actual affected gene, it can be located on the long arm of chromosome 22. So the function of a normal gene, so arginino-succinate lysase function is participated in the ure urea cycle, which is a series of reactions in the liver cells. So basically the urea cycle deals with excess nit nitrogen, and so if nitrogen becomes begins to begin to accumulate, it can turn into ammonia so and then as I stated ammonia is bad in the body so what causes the mutation and the impacts associated with the mutation so more than 30 different mutations are associated with this gene for example when people of Arabian descent two mutations replace amino acid glutamate stop signal at position 116 and sometimes in position 354 in Ar arginino succinate lysis enzyme so the shape is very crucial as it affects the enzyme's ability to control a chemical reaction. If this occurs in the arginino succinate lysase enzyme, this can affect the urea cycle, which ultimately result in excess nitrogen, which results in the accumulation of ammonia, which is toxic for the body, and especially in the nervous system. So the genetic testing options, I uh, listed two options. So for molecular genetic testing, once the ASL has been identified by a sequence, that sequence can be, be known and then they can use a targeted variant analysis for a pregnant and then they can use that test in a pregnant woman and then they can see and then a genetic diagnosis can be possible or they can do biochemical testing. So the way it can be tested biochemically is by using amniotic fluid from a fetus and they look at the concentration of arginosuctinate and then am amniotic fluid. So the genetic testing time frame, it's usually done between 15 to 18 weeks of gestation in the fetus, but however, testing can be done at any time, done past this period, but since it's normally found in the neonatal period, 
it usually tested 15 to 18 weeks. References and then thank you.